We take food in through the mouth, it travels down the esophagus to the stomach, and we've just seen that that's where protein digestion begins, is in the stomach. After the stomach, the food will pass on to the small intestine. And the small intestine is where most of the absorption of nutrients is actually going to take place. So small intestine is very critical for the digestive system. The small intestine is named small intestine just because it has a small diameter. It's not in any way a small organ. It's just referring to the fact that the diameter is small. The small intestine is actually about 12 feet long, so it's, it's pretty lengthy. In a picture, the small intestine is right here. Um, it is usually sort of wrapped around by the large intestine. You can maybe see on this picture, the large intestine has a larger diameter than the small intestine. Um, but in terms of length, the small intestine is actually the one that, that's really long. So a small intestine, about 12 feet long, it's separated into three different sections. The first section that the food makes it to um, upon leaving the stomach, the first section of the small intestine is called the duodenum. And after that, there's a section called the jejunum. And after that is the ileum. That's a capital I-L-E-U-M. Ileum is the last section of the small intestine. The small intestine is gonna, going to give you a little bit of a throwback to the heart, actually. The small intestine has pacemaker activity. The muscles that are lining the small intestine will contract automatically. They spontaneously depolarize and, um, and undergo a contraction. And the rate of contraction is what can be controlled by the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system. So a little bit of pacema pacemaker activity um, back here. The mucosa is very specialized in the small intestine. The mucosa has a lot of projections. They're like finger projections. They're called villi. But then in addition to the villi, there are just microscopically, there are a whole bunch of other little projections on top of that, which are called microvilli. So looking at the picture here, again, zooming in into the lining, um, the mucosal lining of the small intestine. Okay, so we've got these we've got these structures and all of these little tiny projections, these are just helping to increase the surface area over which absorption can take place. So small intestine is very specialized for absorption. Digestion continues in the small intestine as well. So it's doing two major jobs, digestion and absorption. Let's focus in on digestion for just a minute. The lining of the small intestine so these microvilli, um, these are just, essentially there are folds in the plasma membrane of the epithelial cells. They have a very folded surface, which again is helping to increase surface area. It turns out those folds, uh, the plasma membrane has a lot of enzymes built into it. Um, these folds, this ends up making it look like a, a brush, kind of like a paintbrush. This is actually called a brush border in the small intestine and that brush border is what houses all of these enzymes. So important thing to notice here, these enzymes, they're actually part of the small intestine. They're not being secreted into the lumen where the food is at. They're actually fixed in place in the lining of the small intestine. So this means they can be reused. It's not like they get released with the food and then get passed out with the, with the food and the feces. Uh, rather, they stay put in the small intestine. So it's very efficient. There are enzymes that are specific to pretty much each type of biological molecule. There are some that hydrolyze um, disaccharides. So remember, uh, polysaccharides, we started digestion in the mouth, salivary amylase. Salivary amylase can break those down into disaccharide units, okay, and then in the stomach, um, amylase gets deactivated because the pH is too low. Well, now that we're here in the small intestine, the pH is no longer real low like that. So now we've got enzymes that, that can be active again. Um, some of those are specific to continuing the breakdown of saccharides. Disaccharides will be broken down into monosaccharides in the small intestine. Um, polypeptides, so like proteins, we're going to continue digestion of those as well in the small intestine. So some of our enzymes are specific for for peptide bonds, breaking peptide bonds. Um, and then there are other things that get broken down as well. Um, for example, um, pho phosphatases are located in the small intestine. Phosphatases are needed for stripping off phosphate groups. This is actually really critical for us being able to absorb calcium. Uh, calcium absorption is something that 
is a little bit complex actually. In order for us to be able to absorb calcium, we also have to have vitamin D. Vitamin D is something that regulates the activity of these enzymes, uh, the phosphatases that are in the small intestine. So this is a, something to note if, so where do we get vitamin D? Vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin. Our bodies make it if we're in sunshine. Uh, so something to note if you're like me, if you wear sunscreen all the time, it's important to protect your skin. You don't wanna get skin cancer. But if you're doing that, you're also probably blocking your vitamin D synthesis. So you might wanna take a vitamin D supplement in order to help your body be able to absorb calcium. Something to think about in your diet. Um, okay, so these enzymes that are present, these actually explain a number of different digestive issues that people might have. For example, if somebody is lactose intolerant, if they're not able to, to have dairy or if they have um, intestinal problems after consuming dairy products, a lot of times the cause for that is one of these enzymes is either missing or it's not working correctly. Sometimes these enzymes, uh, in the case of lactose, it would be the lactase enzyme. If lactase um, is the culprit, a lot of times for folks it will work okay in childhood, but then as they age, um, that they lose that functionality. So that's all tied into what's going on at the, at the brush border right here. If somebody is missing a lactase, their lactase enzymes, then they can take a suppl supplement. We learned about that in the lab. Um, lactase supplements can be taken so that someone can still have dairy, even if they are lactose intolerant. So kind of interesting things there. Okay, the, the, uh, the structure of the villi, these little finger-like projections. We've, we've talked about like what's on the surface. Let's go inside. What is the internal structure of a villus? This is actually really important for diet, for um, absorption to take place. It's very important to have the necessary capillaries and vessels present there nearby so that once we absorb molecules, they can be transported into, into the bloodstream ultimately. So taking a look here at the villi structure, the villi are lined with epithelial cells, and we've already seen some of that, and that's true throughout the, the digestive system, the gastrointestinal tract is lined with epithelial cells. We've got some goblet cells that are responsible for secreting mucus. Those are in, uh, shown in blue in this picture. So those are secreting mucus, very important job. We also have, notice right down here, we have this section, it's like a fold inwards instead of projecting out into the lumen this is a fold that goes the other way this is called a crypt this is a really important site for maintaining uh, and refreshing the epithelial lining right here in the crypt this is where we have stem cells they're housed right at the base these stem cells are able to divide they undergo mitosis um, it's estimated I, should, I need to double check this. I think it's estimated that they divide three times a day. In any case, they divide very frequently compared to other cells in our bodies. And after division, what happens is the cells, um, they sort of push, as the cells down here divide, they push their neighbors upwards. So cells get pushed upwards towards the tip of the villi. They migrate upwards. Takes about four to five days in order to, to make that full migration to the very tip. And then what happens is the older cells that are at the tip, they end up getting sort of abraded off. They, they, um, they flake off of the tip and they just get passed out with, with the food. They get passed in the feces. So this is how old cells get replaced. This refreshing takes place all of the time. Um, cells are constantly being replaced and this is a good thing. This means that cells that are have experienced some damage or are just getting worn out, um, we don't want to keep those around. We want to get rid of them. And that's how it happens is right there in the intestinal crypts. Okay, so coming back to absorption, take a look at the vasculature that is here. We've got, we've got arterioles, we've got venules, we've got capillaries essentially that extend up here into the villi. We also have in green, we have a lymph vessel. And these are critical to absorption being able to take place. So if we've got some nutrients in the lumen of the small intestine, uh, where are they gonna go? The first thing they have to do is cross that epithelial boundary. Once they do that, 
they're going to have to make it into the bloodstream by diff diffusion. So we need for diffusion to not be, um, it needs to not be too far of a distance, right, in order for diffusion to be effective. So the capillaries have to be right near the surface here, and that's why they project upwards into the villus. Uh, so the food only has to, nutrient molecules only have to diffuse a very short distance in order to make it into the bloodstream or into the lymph vessel. Which type of nutrients go where? Well, it turns out that the blood capillaries, they pick up uh, monosaccharides, so things like glucose, and they pick up things like um, amino acids that we get from the breakdown of, of proteins. They do not really pick up lipids. The lipids actually go into the lymph vessel, the green one right here. Eventually, the lymph is going to drain into the, the, into the blood. Eventually, they will combine, and then the lipids will be in the bloodstream but they don't go there directly. Okay, so once things are absorbed by these vessels, uh, we're gonna see this later on when we talk about the liver. Uh, these blood vessels, instead of joining up with the main um, blood circulation that's going on throughout the body, instead of going there directly, first they get routed to the liver and the liver does a really important job of processing, clearing out toxins that may have been present, but we'll come back to that later. Um, overall, what does the small intestine absorb? So we've mentioned it absorbs carbohydrates, it absorbs proteins, it absorbs lipids, it also absorbs things like minerals, calcium, um, iron, some of the B vitamins, uh, water, we don't wanna just flush all the water through, right? We want to absorb some of it. The small intestine does a lot of the water absorption and also electrolytes, they kinda go hand in hand. And then another one we're going to be revisiting is bile salts. Bile salts are substances that are produced by the liver and they really help with fat digestion. Uh, bile salts get recycled, so they're released by the liver into the small intestine essentially. And then once they're done in the small intestine, they get absorbed back up in the ileum and routed back to the liver. So they sort of form this, this little cycle. They get reused multiple times every day.